the way that basketball gets into the conversation right now as football has exploded everywhere, given all of the changes in dynamics, is give me fresh superstar who might want to change teams, who might want to create drama. We haven't even gotten this week. We never mentioned at any point this week that there has been a minor development with Damian Lillard, Lillard, but that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, I was genuinely surprised yesterday when Giannis Antetokounmpo, basically, for reasons I'm not totally getting, is volunteering drama in Milwaukee where he has been, you're shaking your head no at me, uh, he is answering a question fairly and honestly. We'll hear the sound from him in a second on a podcast called 48 Minutes. But you're already disagreeing with my premise that Giannis is throwing something out there into the ether that I'm guessing the Milwaukee organization and its fans would prefer he not do, no matter how honest he is and no matter how right he might be about what he's saying because it's how we would all think to put pressure on the organization to get what it is that he needs. He doesn't want to stay in Milwaukee if they're going to make him do it the way he had to do it last time. Like, he wants to be in the game with all these other guys. Joel Embiid is going to be a player here soon on some of this stuff, and I honestly wonder, Mike, as the Lillard news comes in this week, where it again is reiterated at the risk of fine that he will not show up to any other camp but Miami's if he is traded. It's very clear that Lillard is using Shams and the Blazers are using Woj. And you could accuse the Blazers of playing dirty pool. However, Lillard's been the only one reprimanded for it, and he's not caring now. He says, if I go anywhere that is not Miami, the second I get there, I'm not reporting, and I'm demanding a trade to Miami through Shams, and reportedly. And one of the things, I thought I thought he had another guy there. I thought, wasn't it Chris Haynes? Or who did? Who was he linked to? Lillard was the yeah, mouthpiece. And, on yeah, it. and previously linked to Haynes. But now he's, he's upgraded to Shams because he's – He's, well, he's making that? a bigger fire. I'm not saying that Shams is better than uh, Chris Haynes. But I'm, I am. I'm saying that he's got uh, more of a following, and therefore it. you have to understand, Lillard's not willing to make the mess that you actually have to make to lose the Portland fans. And so you have to you have to chronicle the minor advancements on how what far he's willing to push it. And moving from Chris Haynes to, okay, I'll use Shams now, turns up the heat one, one degree. But I believe that our audience is really tired of Lillard. Just the Lillard talk, oh. just the transaction talk that doesn't have any news to it, but will also be like, oh, the Miami Heat wanted Lillard, but I kind of want Embiid or Giannis because we're not far from the conversations when those guys are in play. So let's play this Giannis sound real quick, Mike. And I mean, you tell me what it is that you were disagreeing with. As long as we play and we approach the game every single day the right way and we all sacrifice for a common goal, I can see myself being in Milwaukee Bucks for the rest of my career. But the moment I feel like people are not committed as, a, as, as I am to get that uh, golden fin in the back, I, I, I am not. You know, I am I'm a Milwaukee Buck, but most importantly, I'm a winner. I want to win. And uh, I have to do whatever it takes for me to win. And if there's a better situation for me to win the Larry O'Brien, I, I have to take that better situation. It's that last sentence, I mean, that got everybody's attention because you don't have to volunteer it. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things going on. Number one is that Giannis is a nice guy. And people tend to take niceness as a sign of like, oh, he's fine. He's not going, he loves it here. He loves Culver's frozen custard. Why would he ever, leave? he loves it. Here's, he's different. He's from somewhere. He's not like this American guy. They say a lot of these things. And when you have that, you also have a situation where there is a feeling of lack of sense of urgency from the organization. Like, we're fine. We don't really need big changes. He's fine. He's going to, once we start playing, we'll be fine. So you kind of have to put him on notice that I'm not this nice guy who's willing to put up with whatever. The other thing is, is as, opposed, as you ask, why now, right? You know, a lot of times people end up breaking up in relationships and they say, I never saw it coming. I thought we were happy. 
he's doing the thing right now. It's like, don't think that this status quo right here is cool. It's not cool. It's not cool that what we did in our offseason was bring back everybody a year older and you gave me Malik Beasley and uh, Javon Carter, right? Yeah, and all and all the brothers are, are there now. Um, and that's big for his marketing. I, I learned in Europe that Antetokounmpro's is a, a growing brand it over is. there. But uh, this is a new ownership group. I do think that's part of what's going on here. And while I'm not going to I'm not going to poo poo them bringing everybody back because they were kind of in cap hell, and it was pretty impressive that they were able to get people seemingly at a discount because they could have gone elsewhere and gotten more money. Chris Middleton could have gotten more money. They do have a first time head coach in Adrian Griffin. And I, I think that this is making sure that he's putting up walls and keeping the new ownership in check. He's eligible to sign an extension here in a couple of weeks. That is a massive money extension. And if you remember a couple of weeks ago, he said, I don't know. And that is all because he doesn't want anyone to think that this is just pro forma. Hey, here's this contract, man. Go ahead and sign to be a Milwaukee Buck for three more years. No, I'm not signing anything. I'm going to see how this season goes. I'm going to see how this organization reacts in order for us to be something that's going to be longer term. You just said of Giannis, well, he's a nice guy and he's not going to go. And we said all that about Lillard. It was the same stuff we mm -hmm. were saying about Lillard, and he's been really delicate about trying not to set fire to everything he's built over a decade in Portland. It's, why, it's one of the reasons it's taking so long. But one of the things that I find interesting about this particular timing from Giannis is all of us would want him on our team, all of us know how great he is, while being a nice guy and throwing this in the water, how many Bucks fans are saying, hey, the Heat went last year because of you? Like, I know you want more help and stuff, but the reason that you lost is one of the greatest upsets in the sports history to the Miami Heat and allowed them to go to the finals isn't because you didn't have enough help. That team you won a championship with, it's not because you didn't have enough help. It was specifically because of you. Because of you at the end of games, because of you at the uh, – now, just just so you understand, I know how great a player this is, but if they lost, that fault doesn't fall with someone else more than it falls with Giannis. And he was hurt also. He got hurt and missed games. Mm -hmm. But how does he escape that exactly? Because he's a nice guy and we know he is great? Because – Winning one championship by a toenail, I know how hard it is to win championships, but if he hadn't benefited from Kevin Durant's foot being a little big and being on the three-point line, we would be talking right now about, do you actually want Giannis? I know you and I would want him, but people would be arguing, he's a choker, you can't win with that style, he doesn't make threes, the game has changed. You know what would happen to Giannis right now if he did not have a championship. Right, it's, it's the same thing that happens to every great player Dirk Nowitzki went through. It's like, he's soft, he wants a championship, and then no one ever mentions he's soft again. It's that weird kind of math that we do, but the reality is, why'd they lose last year? The guy that took the bullets for that is the guy that lost his job, is Mike Boonholzer, because when the question comes, Jimmy Butler's killing you, why don't you put Giannis on him? The answer is, Bleh. This is a tone change from Giannis. Last time we heard from him, he was talking about how last season was a step to success, and now he's now it's not good enough. The other interesting part in the dynamic with Giannis that doesn't exist with a lot of these other smaller market superstars is he's already won a championship. So he doesn't really have that much to prove. This is more about his aspirations in a different way, right? No, he has stuff to prove in his legacy to take it to the level that everybody anticipates. But this isn't Damian Lillard who's been in Portland for so long, waiting to win, looking to add this part to his legacy. Giannis has already won for Milwaukee, quote-unquote. Right. I, yes, maybe for that home fan base. But as I said when he came out these comments a couple of weeks ago, Drew Holiday can never win another championship. And you know what people are going to call him? Champ, that guy won. Brooke Lopez, Chris Middleton. These guys get to walk around with their heads held high. John Horst, the GM. Anywhere he goes... They, these guys are, are golden wherever they go. Hey, you won a title, yeah. If Giannis doesn't win another title, you know what they say? You only won one? You're, you're, not, you're not in that area. It's, it's what Aaron Rodgers gets now. Yep. You're not the greatest of the great. You can't be. You only won one. 
What do you guys imagine cap hell would look like? You mentioned that earlier, and I was just trying to visualize it. For some reason, I have it being as the ceiling is is low. There's a low ceiling. You're always kind of bent over. Yeah. Are you? You think in cap hell, everyone is like in being John Malkovich. Yeah, everyone, it's, 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 <laughs> the, the, the roof is a little closer. Wow. Yeah, that. But also, if you're cap hell in basketball, it's particularly hard because you're a seven footer. So There's a bunch yeah, of burning yeah. money just hanging from the ceiling. So you're like, it's a low ceiling, and you're making your way through burning money. See, it's cap hell. It's all those things, but also it's crowded, and it's crowded just with like players who have had some of the worst contracts ever, like Kent yeah. Bazemore and Timothy Mosgaard. Yeah. Yeah. Jacoby <laughs> Ellsbury is welcoming you. And every year, once, <laughs> once a year, they celebrate Bobby Bonilla Day. 